This week on the show, we're featuring Chevron Amethyst, Labradorite under the microscope cam, Crab Cracker on Why Did I Buy That, 25 new jokes, and more passion than the fruit. I got a match on a dating app. She asked if I lived in a nice neighborhood. I said, well, that depends on what you mean. She said, are there bars on the gas stations in your neighborhood door, on the door? Are there bars on the doors on the gas stations in your neighborhood? Do the gas stations in your neighborhood have bars on their doors? I said, yeah, but they're not as thick as they are in some parts of town. Let's start the show. Welcome to the show. Thank you for coming by. Hope you like amethyst. This is a striped amethyst. Usually amethyst has big zones in it. This one's got layers. It's kind of weird. It's like different eras of of light radiation making different bands in the gem. It's cool. And I like the shape of it. I hope you do too. I like the way this week is shaping up. It's a great week. I hope you like... I won't sing anymore. But Ron will... Grandpa Shark... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, that's a catchy song. That song is more catchy than I love... It. No, it's Raining Tacos. From out in the sky, tacos. No need to ask why. Just open your mouth and close your eyes. Roxy Rance, how's it going? I see you changed your profile picture. Getting ready for the old ween. The empty ween. It's all hollowed out. Just like a pumpkin. Sharice, good evening, Sharice. How are you? Good to see you. How you been? I missed last week. Too tired, didn't have a gem ready. Took a trip to the New York City. I almost said Chicago, because that's the big city around here. But it's like, nope. I was going all out. Go big, and then go home. Pink Amethyst. Ron Weasley, actually, the thing is... Where's my where's my webby cami? Where's my spiders at? I need my spiders to get me my webcam. Oh, that's a joke, right? What, what do spiders use during Zoom meetings? Webcams. We're going to write that one down so that we can retell it again. On Halloween. What do spiders use for Zoom meetings? Webcams. That's pretty bad. Maybe we can make it a little bit better. But we'll tell that joke again next week. Hopefully it'll be a little bit better of a joke by then. Video number two. But certainly not lacking. Yeah. So we got the bulk of the like roots and stuff off. All the bad stuff. Now I'm going to try and get it down a little bit closer to the shape I want. And I started out using a 100 grit. This is a 240. This is a worn 240. 
I'm going to polish it up so I can see into it, see if there's anything I want to get rid of, and then we'll kind of go from there. Cody's Country. Oh, I like that name. Yeah, I like that one. That's a that's a great channel name. That shows that you're you're showing your content, man. I like the I like the name change. All right, now I know why I'm getting notifications for that. I just I don't spend enough time consuming content. I sure need to. Which it will happen cuz now that it's getting closer to winter time. Awesome. Great to see everyone. Who's to say some of those brand bands weren't caused by astronomical events such as asteroids or huge supernovas? They could be flares, but they're so timed. They're timed in into they're they're evened out. Hi everyone, hi Colette. Chat four. Ron, I need a .NET framework like 7.0 or something like that, and that should bring back the other chat bot. We're gonna try and and get that to happen, just for you, man, and for me, because I, I I took the time to pro I programmed it because I thought it would be fun, but the fact that you enjoy it too shows that we're both awesome people. So what do we got for the show today? I was talking about amethyst. We got uh, gemstones. That's in the works. That's the end of that video. I'm going to go do an open mic night after this. I should show you guys all the pictures for for New York City. Because I did... Um, you know, I've been talking to Tom Kelly on the Tom Kelly Show. I've been posting his podcast. He's actually got a pretty cool guest coming up after the show. So we got to check that out. Um, actually, I'll grab that right now while I'm telling you. So anyway, uh, I was listening to podcasts. I found the good old-fashioned uh, Dennis Miller podcast. And his co-host, Christian Blatt, was talking about how he had a podcast so i was listening to christian blatt's podcast and then i saw something about a youtube so i started doing the youtube christian blatt started doing more youtube and uh when everyone was spending time in their house he spent more even more time on youtube and i got to chat with him during the live streams one of the live streams christian blatt had a guest Oh, and his podcast is called The Blattcast. I interviewed him earlier. He answered the pizza question. Awesome guy. Check him out. I, uh, I saw that Christian Blatt had a guest named Tom Kelly. And he's like, he, he's got energy. He's got that crowd work ability. He's talented. And I'm trying to get to that point. Ready and oh, There we go. All right. So you know I'm on his channel now. Let's get to this video. Okay, episode 243, Banter Coaching. That's something I need, right? That's something I'm going to click on. Because I need coaching with my banter. I could get better at that. And it's not just banter coaching. It's banter coaching with Kristen Carney. Hope I'm saying that right. So anyways, I was talking to Tom Kelly, who does stand-up comedy in New York City. And I was like, what if I just drive out there and do some open mic nights? Huh? That'd be fun. I'll get a feel for the city. I'll be doing some New Yorky stuff. And, uh, you know, never seen the big old city. I was like, do I really want to go out there? There's a lot of people out there. It's not that bad. Nah. I mean, I'm sure at the right days or, you know, holidays or events or something like that, because, I mean, I was in the heart of Manhattan. I was in, like, like, like this way, Times Square. This way, Central Park. Walked around Central Park to go to the comic strip live, which I'm getting to in the story. So I actually walked all throughout Central Park, and I need to get that live stream back up. I got a live stream where I walked over there in the middle of the night, and nobody was there. Did see seven rats. In grand total, I saw 11 rats while I was in New York City. And the thing is, I mean, that wasn't that surprising. But what w what was kind of surprising, you know, the rats around here, they stay as hidden as possible. Usually you just see signs of them. Usually it's just mice. I mean, a rat's pretty rare. 
That's like one rat every five years or something like that. So what was a little strange is that compared to around here, the rats there are basically squirrels. They're squirrels with bald tails. And they're kind of friendly. And they're kind of like looking over their shoulder. Hey man, you got some pizza? You got some, you got some snacks? You want to give me a little treat? No? All right, whatever. Get out of here. That's what the rats are like in New York City. Hilarious. And, you know, kind of cool because they're friendly. And they play around a lot. And I saw three mice and seven squirrels. The, the squirrels, I did see rats with wigs on their tails in Central Park. It's all that in Central Park. That was fun. And I got to see Christina and Sun Ghost Squad. That was awesome. Got her a gemstone. She came to the comedy show with me. She actually recorded my set at the Comic Strip Live. So I'm going to chop that up. I'm going to put that on TikTok. I'm also going to try and upload it here. I just wanted to get spaced out and get my, my, my streams for New York in with the gem streams. Because I'm trying to keep this channel as a, you know, a gem stream. So that, you know, that's kind of what I'm going for. But I wanted to get some, some of that New York trip in here and get it posted on the social medias. Also, been trying to get caught up on work. But that was another thing. Basically, I went to New York City, had a blast. And uh, when I was heading out there, I talked to Tom Kelly about the open mics. He said, you should talk to Gladys Simon, who organizes the Comic Strip Live, a comedy club in New York. Classic comedy club. A lot of big names been there, done it, and it's a really good comedy club too. Like, like the bar was higher, you know. Trying to do comedy with other with these other comedians who were up there. Funny people. Great job. Had a blast. Going back as soon as I can. I don't know. I'm, I'm a little like, do I really want to go back when there's snow outside? Cause I walked 40 miles in two and a half days. Seriously, when I was on the way home. Every time I stopped to get gas, my legs were so locked up, I looked like a disabled Civil War veteran. Like, I was, like, hobbling and trying to stretch my legs out. How's it going, Gary Green? What's up, Austin McCool? I thought you said something about going to New York, Austin. And, uh, I was like, what part of New York were you in? Did you go to the downtown city? Because it was crazy. And while I was there... After the comedy show, Gladys asked me and Christina to go to dinner with everyone. And so we went to this restaurant and I got a crab cracker, which is what I'm going to talk about on why did I buy that. Why haven't I gotten to the microscope portion yet? Blathering on, telling you all about things. How has your week been? I mean, New York was like, it was like an adventure. I had to go do it. I had to check it out. I had to see what was out there. And you never know, something might come of it. A lot of opportunity in that big city. The Big Apple. I tell you what, though, they call it the city that never sleeps. And uh, if you check out my live stream, everyone was asleep. What kind of shit is that? It's like, really? Around Jamestown. Dude, there is so much more I need to check out on the East Coast. That was another reason that I wanted to go out there. Been to, been to L.A., seen California. I've been to Idaho and Montana. Need to go out towards Washington, you know, check out the, the, the edge, the corners, you know. I've been to Florida, but I've never been east, northeast, relatively. So I had to go check that out. I spent, uh, let's see, about 14 hours driving. It cost $290 in gasoline and $90 in tolls. It's round trip, $380 just to take my car with me. I didn't even drive it much. I did, a little bit. I actually had a lot of fun driving. I drove to the Bronx. I drove back uh, to lower Manhattan. I drove Christina and Son Ghost Squad to Penn Station. We turned up the stereo. We shook the buildings. It was uh, a chance to shake the Casbah. Rock the Casbah. It probably it was rocking back and forth. It's a town. Evening, Jacob. All in chat. How's it going, Benny Loco? Glad you were able to make it to the show. We're just talking about things. Trying to get, 
You could have flown cheaper. I know, Benny. That's actually, that's the thing about L.A. See, and I thought, you know, I like having my car. So I took my car with me to New York. Nope. Too much. I took my car with me to New York, right? But um, I didn't really use it. It was just too much of a hassle to get it out of the parking garage. Which is one of the things, when I got a hotel, I was like, well, I want I want a hotel that has a private bathroom because I saw some of them have shared bathrooms, and I wanted to I mostly I wanted to make sure that I got a shower before I went and did my set at the Comic Strip Live. Oh, there you can see some of the chevrons, some of the lines in there. Yeah. Okay. Next video, getting close to the end of the show. Got to get on top of it, Jacob. Climbing on top. All right, here we go. This is mostly me trying to even it out with, what is this, a 1,000? Is this my two? No, this is my sharp 1,000 grit. So this is me trying to smooth it out and even it out. Nope, that's a piece of aquamarine. That is entirely the wrong. It even says aquamarine. Why didn't I click on it? Okay. There we go. Now what are we? what are we working on? We're going to try and, and straighten it out, even it out, get rid of the little cracks and chips along this upper edge. So I'm actually going to grind that face out a little bit. And we're going to straighten up the backside. This is the Sharp 240. So that's the thing. All right, where are we at? Where are we at? Microscope cam. Microscope on. Microscope activated. But Jenga. After this, I got to get to that open mic night and I'm going to tune into the Tom Kelly show because I need some banter coaching advice. I do need that. There you go. You kind of see my low grade polish with the 2000 grit. Actually, those deep scratches that you can see, that's left over from the Sharp 240. I needed to hit it with the 1000 grit a little bit better. But that gives you an idea of the chevrons. I love watching Christina do her thing. She's a good kid. Oh, she is fantastic. She came all the way out to see me. It took like two hours for her to get out there. Not only did she come see me, she put up with me walking like 10,000 miles an hour to get to the show. Because as soon as we met, it was so... Like, we were planning on meeting at Central Park. And we met at opposite ends of the park. So I had to walk over, kind of run over and find her. And we were like, you know, on the phone, one of those classic moments. And we, we met up and beelined it out of there so that I could take a shower change. And then walk the three hours, hour-long trip to the comic strip live. And get there in time for me to do my show. And we did. We made it with about 20 minutes to spare. Actually, about you, you, you need to be about 10 minutes early. So we made it with about 10 minutes to spare. That's cutting it close, right? And we actually... It worked out. It was great. I was dragging her along like an overfed dog. But she was fantastic. Because, you know, she's a lot shorter than me. So her legs... She, she doesn't naturally walk as fast as I do. Plus, I was all stressed out. I was, like, cutting through traffic and telling people, get out of my way. And I wasn't actually doing that. But um, I was in a hurry to get there because I wanted to make sure I got there in time. Cherie says, hi, Benny Loco Babes. When, when I went to New York, it was better to walk or take a taxi. I You know, I can understand now, Gary, why people take the subway. And I guess taxis are more expensive than the subway. And that they might take a little longer. They might not. It depends on how many stops the subway has. But I walked so much. I mean, I can understand why people take the subway. I was just, I was, you know, having fun walking. I, I, I liked having somewhere to go, something to do. I was just having a blast, really. Kind of like having a blast with this gemstone. I love how it has that transformer shield on the front, you know? And it's got like a, a symmetrical shape, sort of. But it gets a little skinnier at the bottom. And it's got that flare in the back. I really like this gem. Which reminds me, now that I'm back, I'm finally starting to get caught up with work, with quotes, with talking to people, with 
um, getting everyone caught up, getting myself caught up. And so I, I actually, I took the rest of the vegetables out of the garden and I wound up making salsa. So I'm going to do a salsa giveaway coming up here in the next two weeks. Let's plan on that. Sometime in the next two weeks, I'm going to make it happen. When I put it on the schedule, that's when it happens. Which, actually, I got some boxes so I can ship out some salsa to Kiwi Claw, uh, Diane, and Christina and Sun Ghost Squad. Because Christina actually got to try some of my salsa. I brought some salsa with for the trip because it helps wake me up. And so I brought it to make sure I was awake enough to drive. And it definitely helps. Perks up the brain, you know. Set of salsa. Call it my perky set. 5'7", my late husband was 6'6". We used to go to Lou Tannen's Magic Shop in New York. So hard to keep up with him. So I know how Christina felt. Oh, and Benny, it wasn't even just walking. Because I actually slowed down after I, was, I wasn't so stressed out about my set. And what jokes I was going to do and that kind of stuff. Because that's, that's one of the things is that Gladys is trying to get me above and beyond my jokey jokes and into more of my story jokes. Which I'm going to tell you about my New York jokes when we get to the joke portion shortly. I would take the subway from Bayonne, New Jersey into the city. Oh, dude. Yeah, exactly. That's what Christina was doing is she was taking the, the subway from Long Island. And I do not blame her. You know, a 10 mile walk, I'd take forever. I mean, I've walked, you know, five miles, but... Whew. And actually, I did wind up walking that much, just exploring the city, just walking around, kind of enjoying things, you know? It was a great video watching Christina search for coffee. Oh, Sharice, I'm so glad you were there. Oh, while I'm at it, thanks for reminding me. Half the chats didn't come through. Like, Too Tall Rob was there, and Benny was saying a bunch of stuff on the late night chat, and... Like, I missed a lot of the chats. I didn't like it at all. The stream was rough because I kept tapping the screen to get the chats to come up again. It was so hard to read the chats. I mean, they weren't there. And then when I'd tap on the screen, the camera would go out of focus. So I need to explore on that. Let's see. I'm going to write that one down, too. Explore. Am. Chat. Live. We gotta do these things so we can we can grow and win and learn and win and keep doing awesome things for you guys and for me and for everyone so we can have great weeks and enjoy stuff. Which, uh, Benny, I was gonna mention that flying out to L.A. would be a lot cheaper than driving. It's like 600 in gasoline to drive out to L.A. and like 27 hours of driving. Yeah, no way I'm gonna do that straight through. But, um... I could fly out there in like four hours, you know? And I was like, hmm, well, at that price, it's like it's like $200 to fly. So I was like, hmm, well, I'm not made of money, but if I was going to spend 600 on gasoline as a vacation-y thing, what if I flew first class? $1,000. It's like $800 to $1,200 to fly first class. That's outrageous. Who can afford that? Me too, North Plainfield. Last exit I lived at was 109. Oh, Benny's from Jersey. Wow, Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. Okay. So you guys are chatting about being from the Northeast. That's so crazy. And that's awesome. Okay, so this, this is something that I need to actually get into shaping. And I just broke my... Microscope cam. Uh, this is some Labradorite. I wanted to show you guys this because this stuff is really cool. It's almost like it's clear and then it's black and then it's got all the colors in it. Like that blue. It's really good Labradorite too. I can't believe I got because it it's so popular right now. I can't believe I got it for so cheap. I mean, it was it was probably like six dollars for this piece. There you go. There's the flare. We got some yellow flare on this side, and then it goes away. 
And then on these sides, there's a lot of lines, but I'm supposed to dome it over so that people can enjoy the flares of color. It's a big piece too. Let's see, oh, I was gonna do that. I was gonna show you the size. Here's the size of the amethyst. Big old purpley amethyst. Isn't it nice? The big gem. I want to say it's like five or seven carats, somewhere around there. I'm just like really enjoying the regality of this gem. It's it's very very regal. Okay, so that's the amethyst. So hard to get the beauty to show through the camera. Which was another cool thing. I took Christina and Sun Go Squad a couple of gems. Or I took her a bunch of gems and I gave her I gave her a gem and she picked uh Citrine. I should have gave her some more gems. I told her to pick one of that's her favorite, and she had such a hard time picking, which made me feel good because it made me feel like I did a good job. And now they're just sitting in my drawer again. But anyways, there's that Labradorite flare, that yellowness that comes through. And sometimes with the blue, I'm going to have to send her some gems with the salsa. How's that sound? So there's the yellow coming through on that side. And it's like, it's such an interesting stone. I've never worked with Labradorite before. I don't know if it's hard. I don't know if it's soft. I know the amethyst is hard. It's it's tough stuff. But we're going to be working with this, and I'll show you again under the microscope cam, and we'll get to featuring it pretty soon. So that's awesome. It's, it's going to be cool. I'm going to make it cool for you guys. It was a very good year. Hey, everyone. Hey, Zach Schneider. How's it going? Zach, did I tell everyone about your TikTok last time where you were playing? You've you Zach's got a video about playing guitar in the woods where he's like, string a chord, smack, 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 mosquito. String a chord, smack, 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 mosquito. So really, Zach, what you need to do is time it just right so that you can strum a couple chords and then smack, smack like you're smacking your knee. Like, like you know, some... Maybe you could get a banjo and smack, 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 banjo, smack, 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 banjo, 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 smack, banjo, smack, 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 smack. Sort of like that. Legends were created in 59. Where's my salsa? Oh, Ron, did you say you like salsa? Because I've got some I've got some salsa. I need to actually uh, get get some salsa shipped out. So I'm taking notes. Taking names and salsa and yeah, we're not going to say that. Anyways, let's talk about the um, why did I buy that portion of the show. Labradorite did boom in popularity in the last few years and in price. I know, right? I can't believe I got... How's my girl's ring coming along? It's coming along good. I took the opal that I had smoothed over and I flipped it over. And I also got one more piece in my bin that I won on eBay that I need to get uh, paid for so that it can be on its way and I think that one's going to match if this one doesn't work that one's going to work but I think this one's going to work I just need to get it down to a small enough size and then buff it and we can mount it and I want to get it to Colette by Christmas that's way too big something about the conversion of the pictures explodified so we'll move the slideshow down to the right size so you can enjoy it There we go. I thought this was an interesting, why'd I buy that? It's not your standard product, right? Like I do, the product on the shelf. I should have taken a picture of the menu, but mostly the menu had a bunch of, okay, so you see how this has like the Japanese writing, but then it's got English writing, but I still can't read it. A lot of that. Yeah, we went to a Japanese restaurant. Had the chopsticks and everything. See that, that, that is a crab cracker. 
I was looking in the menu. I didn't understand half of it. They had fish. I saw that. I saw the word fish. And then there was a bunch of different ones that I couldn't say. I didn't know if they were cooked or not. I figured snow crab cracker. I'm going to be cracking open some snow crab. It's going to be delicious, right? No, it was a cracker with snow crab on it. With crab salad. It's actually, it's got some caviar. It's got like a couple of kinds of sauce. It's really good. It was really, really good. And it wasn't even that expensive either. It was actually a pretty cheap meal considering. I liked it. But I was determined to use them chopsticks, you know. So they, what they did is they took the round cracker and they cut it into four wedges. You can see one of the wedges and then the other wedge. And I was picking up the wedge with the chopsticks and gnawing on it like I was a, a New York City rat eating some pizza. Did get some pizza while I was in New York. Got a slice of the 99 cent. Well, it was from the 99 cent pizza, but I got to get some sausage pepperoni. It was a $2 slice. I think that was on one of the live streams. It was cool, but actually the pepperoni tastes like rubber. It, t it tasted like $2, put it that way. But it was a big slice. It was like this big, and, you know, it was sticking over the paper plate. So it was a really good piece of pizza. I will give it that much. Um, so anyways, that's why I bought that, is because I couldn't read the rest of the menu. And crab seemed like good. It was meat, and I like crab meat it's weird because i don't like spiders but i like underwater spiders very tasty we'll give them that i think that the name of the restaurant is amura in downtown manhattan mm -hmm. and it, i like i thought it was going to be expensive like like ruth's chris steakhouse was in indianapolis 15 years ago man they they wanted 38 dollars for a, a new york strip and it's not even in new york but this is in New York, and it was uh, like $12 for that snow crab cracker. I mean, you can spend that much at Hardee's, you know? So I thought that was pretty cool. And I got a beer with it. It's some kind of beer. I don't know how to say it. It's a rice beer. It was like a high-end Budweiser. It was really good. It was very tasty. I enjoyed it, and I would go back again and again and again just to enjoy that again. I should be in Alabama for spring planting this year, so I will need your special juice. Oh, Ron, you know my you know my contact, man. I'll hook you up. I gotta send you another gemstone too, just because you're one of my favorite people. Just like all of you guys, you're awesome. Doing well, thanks. Rhythmic mosquito squatting. Zach, I'm gonna be posting some uh I know those clips that I put on TikTok of me at Seven Hills weren't very good because I'm like way off in the distance and it's like you're walking away while at, I don't know. That's another story. But anyway, I got some great clips that actually Christina and Sun Ghost Squad got of me doing stand up at the comic strip in New York. I'm going to chop those up and put those on TikTok. So hopefully those will do a little better. Also, Zach, you're a comedian. Have you ever done a private party? Yeah, I wound up uh, doing some repairs and somebody's like, oh, we're throwing a party. I heard you were a comedian. You went went to New York and all that. And I was like, yep. They were like, can you come over and do 20 minutes? I'm like, well, I think I can do 20 minutes, but the girls usually say it's two or three. So um, I wound up doing a private party. There was like 14 people. And I was standing in front of the fireplace with a karaoke microphone telling some jokes for about 20 minutes. <laughs> it was cool. I had a blast. I really did have a blast. That was a great party. Uh, the gal who organized it, Michelle Burke, she, she smoked a brisket for 12 hours with hickory. Delicious. She smoked some burn ends with apple wood. Fantastic. The guy who organized her, her husband, Dan Burke, he's an awesome guy. He gave me, he kept, kept feeding me alcohol. Like I had, had apple pie, I had whiskey, I had homemade wine, I had spiced rum with all the fruit floating in it and that kind of stuff. Ooh, it was a good party. I was glad to be able to entertain them. There were a few odd things that happened. Uh, like there was like a 10 year old girl there that she, um, she tried to bring me a joke on a piece of paper in the middle of my set. And then her grandpa went, no, no, just let him do his thing. And another thing she did was she took the hamburger buns and she put tomatoes and peppers on them and made smiley faces. 
and brought those up to show me in the middle of my set. And I, I don't know, I said something like, well, oh wow, the buns have smiley faces on them. At least something's enjoying the show. But uh, no, I every, everybody was laughing. It, it was a great audience. It was a great party. I, I really... I enjoyed it. I was excited just for the opportunity, you know, just for the experience. It was weird because I've heard comedians talk about doing a private party and it's like, I don't know about that. You're just standing in the living room telling jokes. You know, it's not the same as a comedy club. I'm excited to see it. I did an event for a pet food factory safety event. Oh, dude, that's awesome. You're getting into the corporate world. Dude, that's exciting, man. I got I to hear all about it. I was actually thinking not this week, but next week I should be able to find the time and opportunity to come down to the jukebox on Wednesday. Because I haven't been there in, what, like two months now? But I really enjoyed the experience that I got going down there. And I was challenging myself to get 45 minutes worth of jokes. And I wound up getting 48 minutes plus like another 10 minutes that I didn't even sew onto that video. So that was fun. Um, let's see. You guys are fantastic. Oh, six to six and a half for hardness for Labradorite. Thanks, Colette. I was wondering about that. All right, so, like, like with spoons, right, Ron, spoons are probably the best way to smack a mosquito. Um, let's see. Where are the jokes anyways? Because I do have jokes for this portion of the show. Got quite a few of them because I got to get caught up from the week before. Also got to take a drink. Because it's that time of the show. Got to guzzle a little gem juice. Cheers. <sighs> Let's see what I got for you. Okay, so... One thing I noticed in New York is that they don't have condiments. Like the pizza had no sauce. I went and I got a burger from Burger Man. Great burger. Awesome little corner shop. But they didn't give me any ketchup. Like they gave me a little cup with like the essence of ketchup down in the bottom. There was enough ketchup for one side of one half of one french fry. I had to pick which side of my tongue I was going to taste the ketchup on. I need lots of ketchup. That's what we do out here in, in the Midwest. We need catch up by the tub you know i want to dunk my hand in there and lick it off my wrist i need a lot of condiments that's what that's that's how we do it out here you go to the kitchen sink you got hot cold ranch it's a good thing i didn't try to do my condiments bit in new york you know about how how you can tell how well somebody's doing by their condiments because then everybody in new york wouldn't be doing that great um let's see this is not organized like typical joke portions of the show. I matched with a girl on a dating app. She asked if I lived in a nice neighborhood. I said, that depends on what you mean by nice. She said, do the gas stations on your, in your neighborhood have bars on their doors? I still screwed that up again, didn't I, Ron? She asked, do, do the gas stations in your neighborhood have bars on their doors? I said, yeah, but they're not as thick as the bars on the gas stations in other parts of town. I called a dermatologist and I got an answering machine. So the dermatologist called me back and I couldn't answer the phone. So I called the dermatologist back and got another answering machine. Apparently my dermatologist and I are playing skin tag. Uh, let's see, I was thinking about my career. Someone said, you should do what you love. So I decided I'm going to start a business starching people's socks. I'm not going to tell the full version of that joke. That's a bar joke. Uh, let's see. Oh, here's one thing that uh, I, found, I, I wrote in the middle of doing the open mic at the Broadway Comedy Club. So here's one of the cool things about going up after other comedians is you can reference their, their comments or their jokes. Like one of the comedians was up there and he's like, oh, wow, these lights are bright which it's like every comedy club it's like if you go to enough open mics you'll hear that probably every fifth open mic somebody will say about how the, how bright the lights are and it's like i got up there and i said you know i'm not actually a comedian i'm just here to work on my tan it's a good thing these lights are so bright because I'm, I'm not an actual comedian i'm just here to work on my tan um uh, 
let's see. Oh, this is an unfinished joke. People were like, boneless chicken wings are just chicken nug nuggets. And I was like, do girls like boneless chicken wings? Because when it comes to that, maybe boneless isn't, isn't a good thing. Ah, that's an unfinished joke. Uh, let's see. All right, so here's a couple of things that I noticed while I was in uh, in New York. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I got to back that up. Because one of the other comedians at the open mic... Um, oh, I wish I could remember her last name. Her first name's Thera. She was actually hilarious. And she darted right after her set, so she didn't get to hear my comment. But she was talking about being a lesbian and having trouble opening a pickle jar. And I said... I hear they just use scissors to open pickle jars. Or, yeah, something like that. All right, we're moving on from that joke. Um, some of the things I noticed in New York. Uh, the pigeons are so big, I can't tell if it's a bird or a condor. Wait, a condor? I can't tell if it's a condor or a pterodactyl. Nope, moving on. Uh, let's see. I... You can tell you're excited when you start a road trip by taking pictures at a new gas station. Man, that's exciting. And on the way home, you're not even concerned with pictures. You're just concerned with not getting robbed while you're at the gas station. Uh, let's see. Oh, somebody was talking about how... Man, I, I do not remember most of this. Let's see if I can do it while we're on the live stream. Somebody was talking about how Arnold Schwarzenegger had a kid. And... Oh, man. It was something... I should have taken more notes on this and tried to memorize it. Because he had a kid. It's something about... He had he had one with the maid, and the maid noticed that he wasn't getting enough attention. So she. She decided to get some attention. She knows she's getting paid like a maid. She's got to secure that 401k. Now she's part of the trust fund. And Arnold Schwarzenegger was just trying to get in there because he wanted to lock and load. Nah, that's bad. We're moving on from that one. Let's see. All right, I'm going to tell you about my trip to New York. So I wound up checking into a hotel. That was cool. First thing I did was take a dump. Second thing I did was get a new room because of the smell or no I, I screwed that one up this is a train wreck okay first thing I did was check into a hotel uh, or all right sorry guys first thing I did when I got to New York was check into the hotel and take a giant dump the second thing I did was request a new room because this one smelled bad uh, that, let's see then I went ahead and um, Walked around Times Square, which was awesome. But after about 20 minutes, I got tired of trying to pick up spare change only to find out it's chewing gum. After about five minutes, someone offered to sell me something. The problem is, I don't know if I should buy the Coke, the heroin, the meth. Try before you buy. Couldn't decide. Uh, let's see. I did enjoy the hotel. It was nice. The only problem is when I headed to the lobby, the elevator reminded me how single I am when it said in a sensual voice, going down. I tell you, I got so turned on, I put a dollar in the door crack. And one other thing I noticed while I was in New York is that they have these really tall buildings, right? Down in the financial district, and apparently people get sad and they jump out of the buildings, and so they put nets on them towards the ground to catch people. That way they can both remind them that they don't want to work for the circus, and they can also trap them, drag them back inside, and put them back to work. Sort of a catch-and-release thing. 
and that catch and release had me wondering if maybe fish who get themselves caught aren't just trying to commit suicide. You know, like a guy catches a fish, and he's real proud of it, he stuffs it, he mounts it on the wall, he says, look at this awesome fish I caught, but really it's just a loser fish who got fired from his job, his wife divorced him, and he lost all his 401k. So that was something, some of the things that I learned from my trip to New York City. Which reminds me, I'm not an adult, I'm an adult. That's a pretty, that's a text joke, I gotta type it out. It's a dash adult. Oh, here's what we're gonna do. Hashtag Trendy Club. We're gonna start a new club. We're gonna make a club that's really hard to join and we're gonna call it the Difficult. The requirements are that you have to be pedant pedantic and snarky. Uh, this week it was the end of Yom Kippur, which means now you have to eat fish because it's time for Nam Kippur. That's a pretty bad one. I signed up for Grinder because I thought it was a dating app for coffee lovers. Turns out it's just for really happy men. Uh, I have been overeating lately so that my butt grows larger. That way if somebody tries to kick my butt, I can absorb the blow thinking ahead you know gotta be smart um let's see i'm getting older the other day i had a spider on me he wasn't biting me he was building his house there i mean i'm i'm so old i just sat there and thought about it for a while i was like maybe i'll just let him that way i'm not alone all the time i'll walk around with a spider's house on me i'm weak when i see donuts yeah because I know, I know deep down that those donuts, if they don't get bought, they're going to get thrown in the dumpster. I mean, I, I want to give them a good home. I don't want them living out in the back alley. I want to make sure that they got a good place to stay. So I buy them just, just to give them a good home. I eat, I eat them too. And I, I eat them and I, I'm like, you know, I want to be healthy. But at the same time, I can eat a lot of donuts. So there's a little bit of a pride factor there. I can eat them and say, look at how great I am. I can eat more donuts than any man. I met a girl who had her name tattooed on her chest. I said, is that your ex, your son, or the whiskey you were drinking at the time you got the tattoo? And last but not least, she didn't want to go out with me, which means I am so single that I signed up to host the Oscars just so someone will slap me around a little bit. Terrible jokes. Awful jokes. Thank you for putting up with those jokes for the joke portion of the program. That's what that is. It's a joke portion of the program. <laughs> you guys are great. Thank you for putting up with this awesome show. I'm glad you were able to join me. I'm going to post uh, some pictures of New York on my Facebook and on my Twitter. That's going to happen this week. I got everything ready. I got it all copied off my phone. I got caught up on a lot of stuff. In the next two weeks, we're going to do the salsa raffle giveaway, gem, gem raffle and salsa giveaway thing. And uh, I don't know what day we're going to do that on, so I'll plan something out. And if you guys want to let me know what day works for you, you have until next Sunday to figure it out. So let me know if we should do it like earlier on a Sunday. Maybe we'll do it on a Saturday. Maybe we'll do it on a Friday. Friday might be a good day. Maybe we could do it on like a Monday or a Tuesday night, you know, or something like that. I don't know. You guys let me know. You can let me know now. You can let me know next week. You can send me a, a message. You can check everything out on uh, my socials at, uh, what is it, jacobleedowney.com. You can check all these commands. You guys are so awesome. I want you to have a great week. Um, gonna post the videos, the clips, and everything on my TikTok, which is another thing that I need to upload to my website, uh, jacobleedowney.com. You know what? I should start a website. It's called youguysareawesome.com because I, I really love it when you come by and talk to me and say hi. And that's why I want to wish you a well week this week. And, of course, every week. I'll see you next time at 9 p.m. Eastern.